little colorful macarons using the Italian method. A little background history on my experience of making macarons. When I first started, it was a nightmare. My macarons were flat like pancake, it has no feet, it was burned, it was like hollow in the middle. It was just a disaster. So I went through a lot of articles, I read through a lot of bloggers and taking different tips and stuff and just keep trying and trying and trying but for some reason there's always something wrong with my macarons like what is wrong with me? why can't I make these little suckers? and so one day I came across this website called Dessert First Girl and it's the web page I think it's written by the blogger named Anita and she makes great desserts and she had an article on how to make the macarons using Italian method and I read it and it was she has pictures like great pictures with details like little tiny detail that we have to watch out for when we make macarons and after I read her article I was like I'm gonna give this method a try the next day I went and got all the ingredients and made macarons using the Italian method and for the first time, my macarons were almost perfect. I almost had the first batch of successful macarons. They were like little tiny macarons with little feet and it was not hollow in the middle. It was perfectly, it doesn't stick to the thing. I was like, oh my god, I almost cried. <laughs> Just looking at my little batch of perfect macarons, almost perfect macarons. It was all thanks to her, Anita. And so today I'm going to share with you this recipe and um, yeah, let's get started. I hope you like it. <laughs> For this recipe, I'm going to be using almond flour and powdered sugar, which I already pre-shifted. And then some sugar egg whites that have split evenly into two different bowls some water and food coloring which is optional as well as a thermometer first thing I'm going to do is to make the syrup so I have the sugar here I'm going to put in a pan with some water Mix it a little and we'll cook this in medium heat, a medium high heat. While the syrup is cooking, the next thing we have to do is to make the meringues. For the meringue, I'm going to be using a stand mixer. But if you don't have one, you could always use the handheld mixer. So in here, I'm going to put the first part of the egg whites. These egg whites have been aged. These egg whites have been aged for four days. And also, I have brought it up to um, room temperature. So we're going to start. of the sugar syrup when it reached about 245 degrees when it reached 245 degrees we're going to turn the heat off and by that time the egg white should come to a stiff peak so let's check it the sugar syrup is now 245 45. So I'm going to turn the heat off and let's check on the marines. 
this piece. I'm going to turn this off. Then we're going to lift. And it's at steep peak. We're going to turn the standard mixer on low. And while it's mixing, we're going to slowly pour the sugar syrup into the mixture. into the bowl, we're going to continue mix it until it's glossy and you can kind of tell when it's done by touching the side of the mixing bowl and if it feels like it's at room temperature then the mixture should be done. After a few minutes the meringue is ready you could tell by the glossiness of this meringue and also it has like a little peak when you lift up the mixer. So when this is ready, we're going to do the almond mixture. For the almond mixture, I'm going to combine the almond with the powdered sugar. And then mix it until it's combined. After it's combined, we're going to add the other half of the egg white into the mixture. And mix it. The almond mixture should look like this after everything is combined. At this point, I am going to add the food coloring. The coloring that I'm using is pink and this is a gel color. So I'm going to add that to the almond mixture. I'm going to add a little bit more because after the macarons are baked, the color kind of fades a little. And I want mine really pink. The food color is optional. If you don't want to add any food color to your macaron, it's fine. So we're going to mix this together. Alrighty, after the food coloring is mixed in the almond mixture, we're going to add the meringue to this. I'll just add a little bit at a time to kind of lighten up the almond mixture. We can check to see if the batters are ready. When you pull it up, when the batter fall off and slowly disappears into the rest of the batter, that should be ready. 
So at this point, we're gonna put it in a piping bag. I'm not exactly quite sure what size piping tip this is, but it looks like this. So we're gonna put the piping bag in a container. So it kind of help it stay in a shape when we pour the batter in. So I'm gonna do a little bit at a time. I don't wanna to put too much in the piping bag because it's gonna be hard to um, pipe it up. After you put it, the mixture in the piping bag, I'm gonna take it out of the container and kind of squeeze it toward the end of the tip and twist it in. So we're gonna just slowly put a little pressure and pipe it out into little small macarons. You could pipe out different size if you want, but I'm gonna make mine fairly small. Here are the piped out macarons. I didn't space some of them out enough so it kind of run into each other and became twins, which is okay. We'll have a twin macaron later. <laughs> and I also made different shapes, little heart shapes and just little stripes for the extra bat batter that I have. After you pipe it out, you could just kind of tap the pants to let out all the air bubbles. Another thing you could do is you could use a toothpick and kind of poke out some of the air bubbles in the macaroon. The macarons are ready to go into the oven and you could check it to see if it's ready to bake by simply tap on the surface of the macaron and if it doesn't stick to your fingertip, it's ready. So the recipe say to bake in a 325 degree oven but I'm gonna bake it in a 300 degree oven because my oven is pretty strong for about 15 minutes and rotate it once throughout the baking process. I just took the first batch of macaron cookie out and look, a few of them got cracks in the, oh no. Well, that's a first. I'm not sure if because I need to set it out longer so the shell could harden a little bit longer or the temperature is still too high. I mean, 300 degrees, that's pretty low. But the rest looks pretty good. So, and for the heart-shaped ones, maybe I'll lower the temperature a little bit to 285 and hope that it will not crack. We'll see. The second batch of the macarons are ready and for this batch I lowered the oven temperature to 285 since the previous batch that I baked in 300 degrees is too high and result in cracks like this one. So I lowered the oven to 280 and there's no cracks so that's good except this one. You kind of like this kind of cracked a little so you kind of have to play with your oven a little bit yeah these are kind of start to crack so maybe next time I'll have it to maybe 280 every oven is different so you kind of have to play with your oven a little bit 
Anyway, so we're gonna let these cool and um, we'll make the fillings. After all the macarons are cooled, I mash them or I pair them up to see which one match up the most. And then we're gonna put filling over it. For today's filling, I'm gonna be using fresh fruits at raspberry and also blueberry and mascarpone cheese. And um, you can basically use any type of filling you want. You could use Nutella, which is really quick chocolate kind of spread. And then also buttercreams or jams and jellies. Just anything you could think of. It's very versatile. And um, But today I'm going to use fresh fruits because I saw this picture from Instagram. I don't remember who posted it, but when I saw it, it was like fruits in between macarons. I'm like, Oh my goodness, that's like such a perfect pair because the macaron itself, the macaron cookie itself is really, really sweet from all the sugars. And sometimes I found that when I use like butter creams or Nutella spreads, it gets really, really sweet because the spread itself has a lot of sugar in it. So um, today I'm going to give the fruit filling a try and let's see how it turns out. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to grab some mascarpone cheese and kind of spread it on the macaron cookie. Just kind of act as a glue for the fruits to stay in between the cookies. And do the same thing to the other cookie. Kind of smooth it out. You don't have to put too much mascarpone cheese, just a little bit. Just enough for the fruit to stay on. And then grab some raspberries. I'm gonna put them, line them up. Try to find one that has the same height. Maybe four. Like this, and then put the top on. Oh, geez, um, look at this! Looks pretty yummy. Here are the finished products. I have filled some with blueberry, raspberry, and that's mango right there. And also, I have some leftover that I did not put any filling in and just gonna eat that by itself. Macarons are pretty time consuming to make but they make great gifts so if you have the time just give it a try and don't give up no matter what. I'll see you next time!